Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here at the Cannes Film Festival, and it's time for a review of About Dry Grasses. This is the newest film from Nuri Bilge Selam, legendary Turkish filmmaker who is responsible for the excellent Once Upon a Time in Anatolia and the palm-winning Winter Sleep, among other works, but those are the two that I've seen. If you are familiar with his movies and you like this filmmaker, congratulations. You will like About Dry Grasses. It's right up there with the other two movies that I've seen from him, if not my favorite of his. The movie is over three hours long and it is mostly dialogue. That may sound intimidating to people who aren't familiar with his movies, but trust me, his writing is just on another level. Watching these conversations is just riveting. When you're at a film festival, you can really feel when a movie is too long. But in my experience with this movie and Killers of the Flower Moon, it just reaffirms the idea that no good film is too long. Do some of the conversations go in circles for a little bit too long? Maybe, but even then, it says something about the characters that they're like refusing to break away from this point. Salen is a master of conversation. The delivery of his dialogue from the actors feels very natural even though the dialogue is so fine-tuned. Some conversations are chaotic with multiple overlapping voices. Others are slower and more intense. The way he films and edits these scenes too is immaculate. Sometimes the rhythm of a scene is over the shoulder shots switching back and forth. Sometimes the conversations take place in long static takes. And what Ceylon will do sometimes is establish a rhythm of a scene and then carefully break that rhythm. Maybe there are two medium over the shoulders shots going on and then he cuts to a close-up and, and you know the power of cutting to the close-up is immense. Or if there's a long static take that's been going on for like six or so minutes and then he cuts, it's a powerful edit. The editing is just so wonderfully restrained and deliberate as are the framing and lighting choices in each shot. The movie is kind of a character study of this teacher, Samet, kind of sadly dwelling in this wintry village, hoping to someday be appointed to Istanbul. One of the main conflicts in this movie is that he has been accused of being uncomfortably close with some of the students. But what Salen finds more interesting to examine is not exactly whether or not or how this teacher crossed the line, but how he responds to these accusations. How he implodes and grasps for control really says everything about him. The other major conflict is that he and his friend slash roommate both have a crush on the same girl. And some of the scenes that focus on this conflict are actually really funny. And these are like the main two conflicts throughout this entire three hour movie. Some viewers might check out after it becomes clear how kind of terrible Summit often is. Some may wonder why we need to spend so much time with this man. But to me, it doesn't really matter what the character's morals are so long as they're interesting to watch. And he certainly was, especially thanks to Denise Salilaglu's performance. He is quietly terrifying in this role. I would hope that he could maybe contend for the best actor award here at Cannes. He comes across as so calm and controlled and thoughtful on the surface, but underneath I'm like, you, you little fucker, you snake. Ceylon goes really deep into this character, sketching what I think is a fascinating portrait. There is one dinner scene which I'm sure that you will hear all about in any review of this movie, where Samet and Nure, the character he's pining after, have an intense discussion about political philosophy. And that may sound like I'm describing a very pretentious movie where the director is trying to like show off how smart he is and how he's thought about all this stuff. But really this conversation is all about the characters, how their personal politics reflect their outlook on the world, and how that outlook on the world is informed by the control that they perceive themselves as having in the world. And I think it's really smart to observe political conversations in that way. The scene's brilliant. It's maybe the finest moment for Denise Silulaglu and his performance, but also Merv Dizdar, who is a major supporting standout in the movie. Another supporting standout I have to mention is Essie Bagsi as one of Semet's students. She is really magnetic in every minute she's on screen, and this young actress will really surprise you with her maturity. There's one particular moment in this movie that is just like the craziest thing I've seen at this festival. I'm not gonna say what it is. You're not gonna see it coming until it arrives, but it is so jarring, kind of jaw dropping. Like the audience was audibly like kind of gasping and being like, what? But it has been fascinating to think about that moment within the context of the movie and to discuss it with other people. The filmmaking here is riveting. The performances, the writing, the cinematography, it is such an engaging and thought-provoking movie. I honestly think I will need another viewing to determine like how great the movie is to me 
and I honestly can't wait to dive back in. I wish this movie would get Salen into the Oscar conversation, at least just for screenplay or director, but odds are he'll be ignored yet again. And even in the international feature category where Turkey submits his movies, like every time he does one, he gets ignored every year. But I would highly recommend this movie, even if it is your first Salen movie, The Chef's Recommendation, I give it a nine out of 10. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Are you doing a sufficient job watering the grass on your lawn?